All right, well, you know, I decided to get a forklift because I'm tired of waiting. And uh, it's really handy to have a forklift anytime you want it instead of coordinating with anybody else. So I'm driving down to Mississippi. I'm gonna take a look at this Nissan 5,000 pound forklift. Should be a bit of an upgrade. At least it'll steer left when I turn the wheel left. Um, and I'll uh, check in when I get there. So I'll see you, see you in a couple hours. I did a pretty thorough search. I was a little bit in a frenzy because I wanted to get, you know, we got stuff to unload here. We got a whole truck of stuff to unload. And, uh, but I didn't want to be hasty. So I, I literally searched the, within a 300 mile range of where we are in Missouri. Put every little forklift that was in my price range in a tab, got a nice message going message every one of them that I was interested. Here's my phone number, I'm not a bum. Ready to go, got cash. A couple of people got back to me, had some good conversations. Uh, it was between this one, which was about four hours south in northern Mississippi, and a Komatsu that was about five hours north, just south of Chicago. And the Komatsu seemed to be in a little bit better shape. It had the, t it had the shift cylinder, the side to side. Um, but it was a 3,000 pound capacity machine and it, its mast only went uh, like nine feet high. And 3,000 pound capacity is like at the very inner area of the forks. So if, you, if you're trying to lift something that's somewhat heavy with slings that's farther out on the forks, it's gonna reduce that capacity and also having an, enough height to lift my taller machines without worrying about getting them really close to the forks, that's kind of handy too. Plus, you know, you can't go wrong with a little bit of extra capacity. Well, it's a pretty uneventful uh, journey. Um, I was tired, I got home really late. Um, but we have it now. As you see, it made the journey, no problem. Um, as you also might be able to tell, they decided to paint one side of it this terrible blue color which is crazy because I would have preferred the patina of the old machine or at least the original color. So I, I think I'm just gonna have to hit that with some, primer, some brown primer just to make it look tolerable. But yeah, let's get this thing unloaded and I'll give you a little tour. Uh-oh. Oh no. Okay, so here's our little forklift. Um, it looks like it's been painted more than once. Ooh, serial number right here. Some green, I guess it was in a, the guy said it might've been in a paper mill. There's sort of like paper mache pulpy stuff all over the place. Um, I did just notice there's a little, nice little, little leak going on here so that that is something from the hydraulic system, not the engine oil. I got two propane tanks with it, which is nice. Obviously, the blue, I don't know why. I guess this guy's girlfriend saw cars and wanted the forklift to be blue, like the one in cars, so that's annoying. Otherwise, I would have left this patina, but I, I think I need to, in, in good conscience, have this forklift be looking like this. Um, it's got this, it's got this multi-quarter, so this, this would be the, the, uh, pull the, the forks back, this is pull the forks, lip, dip, dip the forks forward, that's lifted up, that's down, and then this is the side to side, which, it doesn't have the side to side cylinder on it, I think it needs a different carriage or something. 
um, but it has the it has the pipes for them. These uh, these are where the hydraulic lines for the shift cylinder are. Uh, emergency brake doesn't seem to work. Lights are unclear if they work. And then this is your gear shifter, so reverse forward. The two brake pedals, I guess one's the creep. Dipstick, wow, it's filthy in there. Um, the big problem is that hydraulic leak and something's going on with the brakes because when you're in reverse, you barely can stop it. You have to take it out of gear. Forward, it kind of slows down, so maybe the brakes needed an adjustment. Uh, let's uh, open this up and see the engine. There's just gunk everywhere. It's crazy, the gunk fest. Nissan engine, four cylinder, propane. I like that I don't see many leaks at all from the valve cover. But we gotta get to the bottom of that hydraulic leak because it's pissing oil all over the place. And that might just be a fitting, which I hope it is. Um, all right, so what's next for this forklift? I think we're probably gonna pull some panels off and give it a pressure wash, get all this gunk off. I'm gonna start investigating the brake situation. We have nice new uh, terrain tires that I'll have to get pressed, pressed on, so pulling off these wheels and finding a shop that can swap the tires and obviously give it a little bit of paint. Let's see what we can do. Maybe a, a hose is cracked or something. I hope, anyway. Ooh, that's disgusting. I did figure some stuff out though, fiddling around. This linkage is important. And I think that's the brake issue. There's not, it's not actually, the brakes probably need to be replaced and tuned and cleaned, but that linkage, when you press the brakes, it like disengages the transmission. So that needs to work both forward and reverse. And that makes sense because maybe that didn't like work correctly in reverse or something like that uh i was a little scared because i you know like an idiot blasted some water into the distributor cap but it started now i don't know what i don't know what is going on here maybe that's the steering piston uh maybe that's what's so dirty There's a lot of gunk right there. We'll have to see. And uh, I couldn't get the mass to go all the way up, now, which means there's probably like not a lot of hydraulic fluid. It'd be nice to see fluid spurting out of somewhere. So I'll have to give this another pressure wash, get all this gunk out, and uh, see what we can see. I've been, oh my God, pressure washing this thing like a, like a lunatic. And uh, that I've been washing dirt off, trying to figure out where things are, cleaning things up, spraying things down with degreaser. I think I did not get enough degreaser. But this is where the leak is. This is some sort of power steering cylinder. I wonder if I can just disable this 
uh, so that I, it's not blasting fluid out of here. But this is what I need to fix if I don't want leaks all everywhere. But it's nice because the engine is not leaking. It's dry up here. I mean, it's wet because I've been spraying, but um, so I probably got to clean this distributor cap. The wiring is a little jank. It started right up, but I think there's moisture in the distributor cap or something does not want to fire. And then I guess this was in a, the guy thought it might've been in like a paper mill or something. A lot of this is gone. It's very satisfying. I, I, I couldn't really get footage because it was, it was like right in there, but there's like this crust that was jammed in every nook and cranny. You can see there's like this satisfying crust in here. And uh, I basically had to chip it away off of some of these parts. And there's still some more in these nooks and crannies, but um, I'm thinking I might do a little more cleaning and spray this down with degreaser on the blue part so I can actually paint it. All right, first things first, let's get rid of this baby blue. Oh, that's a, definitely an improvement. Debluified. It's kind of nice that that rusty metal primer is the is almost the same as that Nissan Orange. Not exactly, but this will do until I have some time to fully restore it, or maybe I'll sell it before I leave. Learning lots of stuff about this. I don't think it was originally a propane tractor because right there, I think this is the fuel filler and you can see the, the sender and it's pretty rusted. Um, I didn't see anything in the service manual, which I found last night about the, uh, about it being a propane tractor. So maybe it was converted, um, but it's is much better. Now we must go figure out this steering linkage and uh, got to go get some parts. Maybe we'll give it a tune up. All right, I brought the uh, forklift into the shop here and I think I've figured out some things. So one thing that the guy said, he's like, the brakes don't really work that well in reverse. And what I discovered is this linkage here there was no nut holding it onto this bell crank. And I think it rattled in its little, in its little joint here. This thing right here basically engages a clutch in the uh, transmission. So when you press the inching brake, it disengages the transmission. Um, and I've been able to basically use my other foot to engage or disengage this and, and the, the bad brakes um, to move it around. I think what happened is this bell crank is seized on this shaft. You know, I can, I can hit it with a hammer and cause it to move, but basically it's, it does not want to move free of itself, which either means this rod has bent to where the pedal, pedal doesn't move this sufficiently uh, and or there's not enough travel in the master cylinder to um, move it. I'm gonna replace the master cylinder because it does leak a little bit, um, but I think the brakes on the wheels are in fine shape because when it does work, it works. So we'll free that up in a minute. The other problem is, as you saw in that video, this cylinder is pissing oil all over here. Everything else is dry except for this cylinder and 
this surface here. Um, so I have to remove this cylinder in order to take it in and have it rebuilt. Um, I don't, I didn't, I did not believe they had a kit ready to go. Um, so that's the, that's the next step is to get this thing out. You're killing me. Got it. All right, Harbor Freight, nice. All right. Where my, right where my light is flashing, that's the cylinder ball joint. But there's a frame plate right below it, which is going to make getting it out a huge pain I'm, I'm guessing. I think since I'm gonna have to take these wheels off anyway, I'm gonna jack up the front. I'll pop this wheel off, then I'll jack this up, and then I should be able to Yeah I think that's it there. I can't I can't put my head where I can put the GoPro. Oh, but I think then I can get some access to it and try to get a wrench on it. I gotta get that nut off, and I gotta get the ball joint removal tool in there, and I gotta pop that ball joint. Y'all have a better view than me.
Beautiful. Two kinds of problems with vehicles. Leaks and rust. And if you're lucky, the leaks prevent the rust. That's how you do it, friends. Off camera, I got uh, I got those two hydraulic hoses. They, thank goodness gracious, they were not um, on that tight. At some point, I think. Uh, a kind soul owned this machine uh, because they uh, they tightened them correctly and not reefed them down to where uh, it was destructive. Uh, so now my last step is going to be to loosen these bolts, and I'll I'll be able to unscrew the cylinder right here. Oh, this is filthy. I'm definitely going to wash this before I bring it to them. I cannot tell. Oh yeah, there, there's the, there's where it's been seeping. Well, that's nice. Maybe they have the seals and we can just, I can put this in tonight. That would be amazing. The other thing I noticed, which I thought was just dirt because it was so dirty, there's this, it's like a little bit of pitting here. I don't know what happened there. I tried to scrape it away. It's a little rough here. Now I wonder if this was oriented where that seal blew. And as this worked, either water got in there and started working on it or, or this, this little bit of roughness, it's a little rough here started wearing away on the seal. Now I wonder if that's going to require this be re-chromed or if I can kind of sand this out. But I'm off to the forklift shop and we will see what they say. So I got this cylinder back from being rebuilt and I want to test it to make sure that before I put it where it's really hard to see. Um, so let's get this engine started up and give it some, just some pressure.
that's pretty awesome. Um, I put quite a bit of, I mean, I, I didn't try to destroy it, but I definitely loaded the engine with the pressure and I don't see any leaks and certainly no fluid spraying everywhere. So I think that's a success. I'm confident um, to reinstall this. That's great. That's a good, um, that's a good uh, situation. talk about putting that cylinder back in like a fool I did not check the threads on those ball joints and I had everything in and I had to file the threads and put the nut on and off back and forth to get it to seat without turning the ball because it you know it would turn the ball in in its socket <sighs> finally got it clean enough jammed under there with my head all up in filth so we tighten that back up and uh we got to get the uh get this battery situation squared away before we can turn this thing back on and test the steering <laughs> can see so I'd say this steering cylinder repair rebuild is a success uh, now let's move back on to that uh, that brake linkage all right that was a pain to get that cotter pin out but now we have a seized bell crank And I gotta get it off of here. You can, I can't even rotate it. All right, I gotta play with this. I'm not gonna waste your time. We'll see what works. It's so seized. Uh-huh. I need to sand this down. I can use maybe one sleeve and grease. I should just drill a hole and put a zerk fitting in here and just keep this super greasy and gooey. And sand this down and get it nice and clean. I um, cleaned up this bell crankshaft, cleaned up the inside of this. I pressed that half of the bushing back in there, kind of in the center, because I destroyed half of it getting it off there. This is not like a high wear part. It's, you know, it's, it doesn't matter if there's a little bit of play here, but I don't want to take any chances. 
So I'm going to grease it up as well. Oh, that is smooth as silk now. Alright, get that put back in. If it moves, grease it. If it doesn't move, weld it. Now that moves like it's supposed to. There's a full, there's a full cycle on the brake pedals. And now this linkage is supposed to go in here. So when you press the brake pedal, it moves the clutch thing here. So let's adjust that. Nut is not the right size nut. I paid a dollar fifty for it. Can we talk about how funny it is that I literally have an entire wood shop and all the support tools and every fastener and every tool in this truck? And I have a forklift that doesn't work that I need to unload this truck. And now I have to probably go to a store to get one nut. All right, now we're finally ready to put that linkage in. I got a nut. Um, so the idea is that when you press the inching brake down, it pulls this out of drive. Uh, so basically, I need to adjust this position. So let's just tighten, let's just tighten this up. There's a couple things I want to do here. Um, one is simplify this electrical system because it's it's been it's just been a mess. Uh, gonna remove the backup alarm because my forklift and I hate that noise. Uh, this fuel sensor, fuel sender. First of all, this is rusted out. I don't know what was going on here. Um, this must have been converted to propane because this is where the gasoline goes. Now I suppose you could plumb this in to make it a, like a secondary hydraulic tank, but I'm just gonna let this sleeping dog lie, but I'll, I'll, I will uh, remove these wires, or at least just put them out of the way. Um, then I can paint this, I can prime this area, and so we can repaint it and it'll can protect the rust. Uh, the other thing that's going to go in here is, I, I don't know what was here, but this, this top section was all rusted out, so I got a battery tray. 
and I think I just need to trim it a little bit to fit around this this cover thing but I can tap a hole here and then the battery has a place to live with the tie down because before it was just a crazy bungee cord and it, it wasn't really attached to anything it was just really loose uh, got the new cables on and We'll also start doing some of the maintenance stuff here. But uh, a lot of this electrical work I'm gonna do off camera because it's it's just not very interesting. If there's anything weird, I'll, I'll bring it up. But, you know, to move the camera for every little cut of the wire is, it's it would take forever. So I'll uh, update you when I come back from the electrical work. this I noticed that it was having trouble starting now I don't know if that's moisture that got sucked in um, to the propane regulator or my other thought is that moisture got into the distributor somehow or that the points are weak generally obviously when you pressure wash a machine don't just blast it right at the electricals you know I, I wasn't cleaning the electrical specifically it was just around the engine so I want to do some preventative maintenance and check the distributor points as well as the spark plugs. Wow, this looks like it's new. This is like the cleanest thing I've ever seen. Let's compare it to the other one. So the this one has these little teeth and this one has two little notches on the bottom, whereas this one has three, and the heights are different. I don't know if you can see this in the camera. My suspicion is they gave me the wrong part, but I'm not gonna fuss with this too much. It looks really new, like they may have, they may have replaced it. I'm gonna hit the points with a tiny little file just to clean them up, but I think this is actually probably in fine shape. Spark plugs look clean. Pretty clean. These are the same spark plugs. So I'm thinking I might replace all of them. That way I know that they're good and I get, I'll get, i inspect each of the uh, spark plugs because if there's any weird things in the, one of the cylinders, I'll know about it now. I must have fixed something because with my electrical because now when I turn it on this this is the low oil pressure light that used to not come on and I'm guessing that that's the sensor I reconnected down there what I also what I also notice is the the sensor for the uh, transmission and water temperature do not work so that can't be good um, but I'm not <clears throat> I'm not gonna stress about that right now because I need to unload this truck yeah i mean i'd like to get that to work at some point but i'm guessing it's sensors and not gauges um but another day i'm gonna bend this back a little bit i don't understand some of the some of the damage that happens to these forklifts boggles my mind
that looks a lot cleaner. Let's do the transmission filter. Why these filters are upside down is beyond my comprehension. It appears to be the same ring. But it's red. Red ones go faster. Why would you do it like that? Now there's transmission fluid all over the... Very cramped quarters. I will attempt to convey the difficulty with which it is to do an oil change. doing I wonder if uh, if it's just not getting enough cooling or the thermostat is gone I wonder if it's a fail-safe thermostat yeah well I should probably check that this oil filter is pretty busted so I wonder if it's ever been changed be loose though Ooh. yeah it's just warm in here I mean I ran the engine not that long This is a strange position for an oil filter. I, I, I think you're supposed to pre-fill them, but I don't see how I can pre-fill this one without pouring oil all over the place. That's a lot of oil. Oh, it said it did not need that much. It needed more than a gallon. Hmm. This is gonna be disgusting and a mess. Yeah, it looks like that's the right amount of oil. Looks like it's just on on the high side. All right, I will uh, clean this up and then let's uh, add a little hydraulic fluid. I don't know. This engine just seems so hot for running just briefly. If this thermostat is bad, I might just eliminate it, order the new one, and then put the new one in when it comes. Because right now it's still warm. And if, uh, you know, the engine will warm up just fine. But once it's cold, then it makes sense to have the, uh, thermostat. Oh. 
Ah. I guess I'll go test this by putting it in a pot and boiling the water. And uh, it should move. And then I'll know if it's worth the trouble. Obviously this water is boiling. So, uh, this thermostat should open. And if it doesn't open, I'm excited because that means that's why the engine was hot. Oh, look, it opened actually. It's like a clam. It's like a big clam. This is no different from a mussel. It's just like mussels. If the thing doesn't open, you, th you toss it out. Okay, well, this isn't a problem. So I just, I, I guess I'm sensitive to the engine heat. Let's go back and put it in. Down on a hunch because, you know, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. I didn't have the energy to, to film last night at when I got this thing started, but here we are. I was so excited about the forklift running that I, I didn't see that this concrete pad dropped off and, and now it's stuck. Okay, well, let's, take, let's just yank it out of there.
extracted the forklift. Man, this thing is heavy. When it gets going, it just goes. It just goes where it wants to go. You know, the thing about this forklift, which is, it's definitely an improvement, but I didn't realize how important this uh, handbrake, emergency brake is. My old forklift, when you put it in neutral, or when you basically put your take your foot off the the uh, the gas pedal, it kind of locked in place. Whereas this thing is free freewheeling and fancy free. I can push it, and obviously, so I pulled it. So I better I better get a pair of chocks to hang off the back of it because if you have to hop out to uh, to do a task or something, it's just gonna roll away. That's pretty satisfying. Take it for a spin. I didn't think I'd be getting a forklift and then when I was getting a forklift I didn't think I'd get one that needed a bit of work but I'm I'm really um, really happy that it was able to get come together so soon because we really need this forklift a massive shout out to Missouri uh, industrial equipment and Tom, uh, Chris over there who just went above and beyond to just like rebuild the cylinder and get these wheels pressed on and just the nicest guy the best shop so this um this forklift is ready to use i'm not going to spend any more time right now working on it obviously i'd like to paint the primed areas the orange and clean it up and put some decals on it and make it look nice maybe fix the lights put the mirrors on do the hydraulic uh fluid uh filters at some point but right for right now it's a worker so let's get to work if you like this, please uh, let me know in the comments. And uh, thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.